So I'm going to be talking this morning about skills gaps, risk to level two, um, a perspective from the SME supply chain. I'm from Bimford SME. That's me there, Terry Goff. I'm part of the leadership group within Bimford SME. I'm their education and training officer. Um, I'm also a project manager, I've been champion um, from the client side, work with both Kent County Council and busy working with the NHS at the moment up in Peterborough. So that's a little short snippet of me. So we've been looking at the skills report by BRE. We've, we've had that a, a few weeks now um, within, within been for SME and we've been looking at that and whatever else. And, and we've, we've taken some of the highlights out of that basically um, to pull this together. So if we look at that there, um, 62 respondents were SMEs basically within the BRE report, which are, you know, quite, quite high. Um, within industry itself, we have 5.4 million within construction businesses. Um, within that, the SME side of life, I think, is one fifth of that. So, you know, quite, quite, quite a big area within construction. Um, adoption, growth, and reaction. BIM is increasingly a part of our working lives now. I think every day we come across BIM. I think. <coughs> Most would say we're a bit of a BIM zombie now, aren't we? You know, there's that much BIM being chucked at us every day now. You know, you've had two days of it, basically. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, how are the roles formulated? Do we have clear frameworks for, for BIM managers, BIM coordinators, information managers? You know, there's, there's, there's this document out by, um, by central government of an information manager and what his role is. But actually, there's no real training there at this point in time for this information manager. He's got a description of what he needs to do, but does he know what to do? Um, the stresses and strains are now being realised, um, as we can see by the two slides there. Um, as I've got at the bottom there, of those that have been ready against what is this being measured, or, or, or are we just in denial, basically? We need some sort of measure within industry. That are we been ready? What's, what's being used there? You know, we've got lots of this certification out there, um, and I'm quite passionate about that. Um, what, what does it mean? Where is it coming from? A manner from heaven, remarkable reliance on bought in consultancy services for key aspects of delivery. Yeah. Um, we've been there a good few times now within, within um, BIM for SME talk, talking about this. Um, uh, I've got a few bits down here. The BIM for SME believes enough skill in organisations become BIM self sufficient. So rather than buying in this resource, let's get yourselves BIM efficient. That's what we're looking at at BIM for SME, to upskill you, or the client, or the engineer, or the contractor, or his, his QS, or his site manager, to understand what BIM actually is and what it means to their business. So in denial, at this point in time, is this level two federated model information on compliance with level two components? Are we really ready to deliver Kobe? And looking at that slide there, um, the 60 percent is we already have the relevant expertise, but as we've just looked at the slide previous there, a lot of that is bought in. It's bought in expertise within a business. I've looked at some further surveys and whatever else, and, and if we look at this one there, we've got 41% are not clear on what they have to do to comply. 41%, that's quite a high percentage. 10% believe that construction is now ready. 10%, it's quite low really in reality. Yeah, of, of, of where everywhere else is saying, you know, that we're, we're ready, we're doing this, we're, we're certified or whatever else. Um, and 28% feel that a lack of skills and knowledge describe themselves. Not very, or not at all confident when it comes to BIM. So there's, there's, there's still lots of that going out there in industry at this moment in time. And I think that's what this has been about over the last two days. Are we actually ready yet to deliver BIM level two? <coughs> As I've already mentioned, there's some changing roles there. Um, and, and, and roles are evolving and how evolved. Um, and are we ready or not with those roles? As I've said there, the information manager, yeah, we have this script but actually who is delivering that piece of training for that information manager? Or is it just Joe Bloggs who used to work as a site manager that week, this week he's now the information manager? 
And there you go, read that. Get on with it. So this is all about upskilling the staff within a business, understanding where we're heading. There's still lots of uncertainty out in the industry, still a lot of work to be achieved to ensure that we, we, we all play on a level playing field. Because at the moment, we're not playing on that level playing field. We've got some that are well advanced, but actually, the remainder are still sitting at the back of the, the room, basically, waiting and hoping that someday they'll pick it up, they'll do something. As I've just said there, the big boys may understand um, BIM, but, but, but their supply chain doesn't at this point in time. And I think, I think from the big RE report that I've read, um, and, and some of the figures that we've got there, um, it, it's, it's, it, I think it reads quite well that they're not ready yet. You know, not, not a lot of the supply chain already yet. Just go back to that slide there. Um, changing laws. Uh, just a few bits here. Do you really believe that we're going to change that much that quickly? I.e., 2011, we're now at 2015. Um, there's been talk this morning, daily, you know, graduates are coming out of, 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 of academia still not knowing what to do. You know, so are we really going to change that quick? Where is the plan for that change? Yeah? We've got a plan for, for, for going forwards, but where's the plan at the moment for, for um, the legacy of level two? The guidance, we've got guidance yeah, on Puzzle 1192, how to deliver certain things, but actually, what we haven't got is guidance on what should be upskilled, what we should be doing there with all of that, how we should be upskilling industry, you guys and girls out there. Where's the leadership with this? Who's leading on this? Or is it just left to us, once again, the industry, to try and do that? You know, we're moving into this legacy mode now, um, or we've moved into legacy mode now, in reality, but I think we still need some leadership somewhere down the line. We haven't got that. So it's left to us to try and resolve that once again. <coughs> recruitment, a little love them. Um, the recruitment industry are stakeholders in the solution. Yeah, they're out there. They're, they're, you know, they're advertising every day. I'm sure you all get hundreds of emails every day from, from um, the hawks, shall we say, out there. I'm sure. Don't know if there's any in here, is there? Yeah. Any recruiters? Um, but yeah, they're all out there. And, and, and every day, you know, I'm sure you get hundreds of, of, you know, this guy's really good at this, this guy's good at that, with BIM or whatever else. Um, we need to capitalise on that expertise, certainly, and we need a voice within that. Um, the danger is it's unregulated at the moment, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got no understanding of what the person is meant to be delivering. That's the problem. We know from PAS 1192 or BS 1192 or PAS 1192.5 or, or whatever else, but actually the person's specification isn't there yet for this BIM manager, for this BIM coordinator, for this information manager, for whatever else. It's very scant. At the bottom there, um, do we ignore and embrace? That's what we've got to think about. Do we just ignore them guys or do we embrace? I feel we've got to embrace and um, to bring that forwards. Um, this one goes on to um, education and I think where, where Dale was coming from this morning there, um, where at this moment in time, we've got graduates coming out of university uh, and they've not been taught BIM, you know, which is what we're meant to be doing now. It's, it's where we're at, it's where we're going forward to. But actually, it's not happening in the real world. So, um, education, 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 it's true, secondary, further and higher. Um, where's the leadership coming from for that? Where, you know, who's leading on that? Is academia leading on that? Don't think so. Or central government coming back and saying, actually, we need to get a plan in place. No, they're not. Once again, we're being left to our own devices to deliver education, basically. We need to capitalise on the fantastic work that's done by uh, COIO, definitely, and, and others, actually. You know, your good self that you talked about this morning, you know the good work that they're doing. We need to capitalise on that. Um, what about colleges, universities? Where are they in the progression with uh, 
where is the progression being articulated within universities? Is it clear to us what needs to be delivered? Yeah, we've talked about Berman, you know, just 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 there on, on on standards. If we can't get that right, what, what are we meant to be delivering? What is the guy, you know, from from the business, your BIM manager or whatever else? What does he know what to deliver? You know. And if they don't, what about the kids? If we can't get it right, and academia can't get it right, and whoever else can't get it right, then what are we being taught? Then without support equals failure. I think, I think that's very true, actually. And we need some support. Um, I don't think we've had support from central government at this point in time. They've, they've given us some great documents and God knows whatever else, but actually, they've lacked in leadership. Or oh, my personal feeling is they've lacked leadership. They've, they've not taken you know, the reins, really, for us. Um, so for clients, for contractors, for designers, for suppliers and for operators, you know, without leadership, we're just, we're just heading in whatever direction. We're doing what we want, what we feel. And I'm sure out there, you're all doing your own little thing. You know, we talk about collaboration once again, but I bet you're all doing your own thing. I bet you're not one company out there is doing exactly the same thing as the next company that's sitting beside them. We're all trying to do our own thing. There is a skills gap. I think that's been mentioned this morning there by, by, by Dale um, and by other, I'm sure, over, over this two day period that there is a skills gap. Um, I've saw myself, you know, working on the client side of life. Um, when you're looking for good quality information managers, you're looking for good quality BIM managers or BIM coordinators or whatever else. Um, are you, uh, uh, or you look at some of the roles that are out there, you know, you pick up that piece of paper and all of a sudden they want this PM, um, this trainer, this, this, this BIM coordinator, this, this BIM champion, this BIM manager, this God knows whatever, rolled into this, this one person. They want this all encompassing God, shall I say, of BIM. The skills gap does need addressing. We do need to address that, I think, as industry. Um, we do need to, to raise our voice to the leadership. Um, and hopefully we could get it right for moving forwards into level three. Yeah, we've got some legacy there um, that we need to, to, to deliver and get right. Um, maybe we could have that voice and get back to central government and say, actually, we need to be doing this. You need to look at this realistically. <laughs> Point three there, can we wait for the grown-ups, i.e., can we wait for central government to deliver that? You know, we're, we're pushing at a pace now with this thing called BIM. Can we actually wait for that leadership group to do something, whatever that something is? I don't think we can. I think industry, you know, um, need to try and grasp this a bit and, 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 and deliver some of this and come together. The current provisions is uncoordinated and, op and opportunistic, basically, out there with, with, with the training. And, and I've got a slide in a moment, that when I just finish this off, I'll, sh I'll show you a quick slide um, that I've put together of all of the different providers out there of training. And, and there's not one the same. Um, <coughs> so within BIM for SME, we've got a call for action um, for, for industry, for leadership, for central government, for everybody, really. And, and, and what we're looking at is appropriate training set against a common agreed framework is required. I think that's what we need. And I think we have that, in a way, with the, with the Learning Outcomes Framework, which I'm sure you've all heard of, the Learning Outcomes Framework. I'm sure you're all sat against that and, and, and doing everything that should be done, because that's meant to deliver BIM Level 2. Central Government said, Learning Outcomes Framework will deliver BIM Level 2. Whether it will or not is a different matter, but if we were all doing that, at least we're all doing the same. At least we're standardising some of that training. We need cross-party support um, from the professional institutions. Uh, Dale got on about that this morning there. You know, they're coming out of these professional institutions and actually they're not being trained in any of this. 
you know, they're not being upskilled. The industry bodies, CIC, CITB, those guys, we need to get them on board to drive this. Um, the trade bodies as well. We, we, we need to bring, bring in all these people together as industry, get them in one room. You know, at the moment, we're still living in silos. It seems to be where we're at. And we need a short and medium term plan. So what are we doing about it as BIM for SME? Well, we've got an education and training plan um, in place. We're looking at that at this moment in time. Um, we, we, we've got a business plan of how we can take this forward um, on the learning outcomes framework. We've got thought leadership. We've got multifaceted. Um, we're focused on what it delivers and, how much can, uh, uh, and not how much can be charged for it. We're not into that. We're looking at what the deliverables of training would be, not how much we can get out of it. Yeah? We're a not-for-profit business at the end of the day, BIM for SME. So that doesn't interest us. Okay? Um, but we do need partners to assist in its development. As, as, as Dale's got, you know, with, with, with that big crowd um, to support. Same with BIM for SME, and I'm sure the same with some others. Yeah? You know, we need that joined up thinking where we can bring all of that together and deliver good quality sound training and upskilling for the industry. The future of uh, BIM for SME over the next God knows how many years, we're going to move to this digital to all. Um, digital to all is a new part of, oh, just go back, didn't realise what was going to happen there. Um, digital to all, uh, we're looking at, and, and this is where the training will come into it now with digital to all. Um, it's where we're moving to, as I say. And that's, that's, that's a five year plan, it's a 10 year plan. Um, but it's in line with level two legacy, um, 3A, 3B but also looking at and hopefully moving with um, Digital Build Britain, the C and D part, and delivering good quality deliverables, upskilling to you out there, basically. Yeah. Just, I want to show you a quick slide. Um, I'll just do that. Do, 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 do. I think it's this one quick as you can, um, view full screen and zoom, um, you what sorry? Which one where, where, show me, that ah, full screen work there, yeah there, um, this one here I just sort of took a quick snippet of, of, of where we're at at this moment in time, within, within industry, at the moment we've got BRE, the RICS, CAD Lane, BIM Academy, the NFB, ICE and, and, and Bizria, and they're all offering some sort of training um, in relation to, and obviously I've got your good self now, um, but they're all offering training in some form, yeah? But what there isn't is consistency. We, we haven't got that standardisation. They're not using the learning income framework. I've looked at a lot of what they're offering, um, and, and it doesn't afford and meet with the learning outcomes framework, and I think that's where we need to get to, that we do, you know, use that as a standard that everybody's on that same level playing field. So when you go to RICS, it's exactly the same as what we're going to get from BRE. It's exactly the same as what, you know, you're going to get from ICE or whoever else. And there's three parts to that learning outcome framework, you know. At the moment, as you can see there, there's a whole myriad of, of God knows what, you know, when it comes to training. And actually, if you go to ICE and you get your certification, does that mean you've been ready? Because actually, BRE or the RICS offering something a little bit different, or the BSI now, they're offering something to be BIM ready, they're still called BIM ready. Or what actually BIM ready when it comes to the training? And I think I'll leave you with that thought. I was going to show you some other bits, but I'll leave that. And if you want to talk to me in the break, we'll have a look at them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.